2023 is shaping up to be the year of AI, with Nvidia stock more than tripling since January. But Nvidia is priced to perfection, with a price to earnings ratio of well over 200. And while everybody is looking for the next Nvidia stock, I think we're looking in the wrong places. Instead of looking for other AI companies, we should be looking for industries that AI hasn't broken into yet, but will over the next few years. And I think I found exactly what we're looking for. Your time is valuable, so let's get right into it. Let's talk about edge devices. Today, many of the software and services that we use are on the cloud. Services like Amazon, Netflix, Gmail, and the Apple App Store run on machines in massive centralized data centers. At a high level, the cloud is the global network of these data centers. Essentially, it is the internet today. And AI is being integrated here first, because AI training takes a lot of resources and a lot of data, both of which these cloud services have access to. But the other side of the AI coin is inference, which is where you give a pre-trained AI model new data and get out its prediction. A new search on Netflix or Amazon, a new prompt for ChatGPT, and so on. So while AI training needs the giant servers and GPU clusters found on the cloud, AI inference can be done at the edge, using devices like smartphones, game consoles, self-driving cars, and so on. Today, we're all focused on finding the next ChatGPT, the next big data center GPU, or the next OpenAI or NVIDIA altogether. But I think we're also going to see all sorts of chips focused on inference for mobile and embedded devices as AI gets more important at the edge. So here are three stocks that could really benefit from that happening. The first company is Quantum SI, ticker symbol QSI. I decided to look into this company after my ARK Invest tracker showed me that it was Kathy Wood's single biggest increase in overall position size for the last month. Kathy Wood bought around 1.4 million shares of this company, even as it basically doubled in price. Here's what QSI is all about. Quantum SI is a life sciences company focused on next generation protein sequencing. Why proteins? Well, if DNA tells you what could happen, then proteins tell you what is actually happening. So DNA sequencing helps us understand the risks of different kinds of cancers, while protein sequencing helps us understand how the body is actually responding to a specific cancer, diabetes, and so on. Quantum SI makes a small machine called the Platinum. The Platinum is an edge device that can go into any diagnostics lab and diagnose almost any biological molecule, including DNA, small molecules, or entire proteins. This is the first chip ever to be able to actually see the structure of a single protein, and Quantum SI has over a thousand patents issued or pending for this technology. The secret sauce in this machine is a chip-based protein sequencing platform. The machine separates proteins and then literally digests them, breaking them down into their basic building blocks, which are called peptides. Then this machine attaches one peptide to the bottom of each well of this special chip which has around 2 million of these wells in total. Then other molecules are added to each well. These molecules are special because they can release light at a specific wavelength when they bind onto something. So the machine will see a specific light pattern depending on which molecules bind to the end of these peptides, which tells you the general shape and function of that part of the chain. Then a cutter removes the end of the peptide, exposing the next amino acid in the line and then this process is repeated until there's nothing left to cut and the entire structure of the original protein has been revealed and recorded as a sequence of lights. This entire process happens across the millions of wells on this chip in parallel. This company is taking advantage of the massive tailwinds in semiconductors, gene sequencing, and in my opinion, AI will benefit them as well. As more specialized chips come out for inference at the edge, quantum SI's machines and other DNA, RNA and protein sequencing systems could see massive speedups by predicting structures instead of always having to measure them. Here are a few important details about this high-risk, long-term growth stock. Quantum SI went public in June of 2021 as a SPAC and is down almost 70% since then, and down around 85% from its peak. Even after their recent doubling, they're only at about a $420 million market cap. They started delivering their platform and posting sales in the first quarter of 2023, recording just a quarter million dollars in revenue. So they're still very tiny, and they're still a very tiny part of Kathy Wood's portfolio. Quantum SI is ARK Invest's 45th biggest position overall when you combine their six actively managed funds. Their gross margins are almost 50%, which is pretty solid for such a specialized hardware company but their current operating income has a long way to go to break even. 
So even though I love the science behind this stock, I'm personally waiting to see what kind of growth they're seeing quarter over quarter. We should know more about that when they report their earnings in a couple of weeks. And speaking of earnings, did you know that Tesla, Amazon, Apple, Google, and Facebook all have their earnings calls coming up soon? If you want a great investing app to stay in the know, check out Moomoo. This app has a ton of awesome features around earnings, like being able to quickly add earnings calls to your calendar, access earnings breakdowns and financial estimates, and even financial projections from Wall Street to give you a competitive edge in the market. This kind of power and convenience is why Moomoo has over 20 million users around the world. And if you sign up right now, you'll get up to 15 free stocks, each valued at up to $2,000 and a $50 cash reward, plus a free share of either Tesla or Expedia when you deposit $5,000 or more. All you need to do is download the app using my link, keep your funds at that level for at least 60 days, and enjoy up to 16 free stocks. But this is a limited time offer, so make sure to get started today. All right, Quantum SI was by far the riskiest and smallest company on this list. That's not necessarily a bad thing, you just need to be in it for the long haul. The next company on my list is Qualcomm. Qualcomm is about 300 times bigger than Quantum SI, weighing in at about $140 billion market cap and a price to earnings ratio of about 13. Qualcomm is the king of embedded computing. For example, Qualcomm absolutely dominates the mobile processor market, owning a 44% share of all of its revenue. That's more than Apple and Samsung combined. Their Snapdragon processors already include accelerators for different applications of AI at the edge, like natural language processing for text and audio translation, and algorithms to enhance mobile game performance, camera capabilities, and video effects. They also design power-efficient GPUs and modems for high-end mobile devices. These systems focus on getting the most performance per watt, which means they're very power efficient, even during compute intensive tasks like using AI to capture and upscale 200 megapixel images or doing real time ray tracing on video games, which is one of the most compute heavy tasks any chip can do. And that's just the mobile device market. If Tesla is an example of anything, it's that the automotive market will be a huge beneficiary of AI as more cars take on more driving tasks over time. Having chips inside the car to take in all that data, do the inference, and then relay self-driving instructions to these other systems will be a big part of the auto industry's future. Well, Qualcomm designs chips and software for all kinds of self-driving applications, from vision systems and automated driving tasks, to route planning, navigation, and even the displays. I think Qualcomm's technology will be a big part of the connected car market as well with their cockpit platform powering infotainment systems that allow you to connect to cloud services like Netflix, shop online, and control different parts of the car from other devices like your cell phone. Qualcomm actually dominates the automotive connectivity market as well, with a massive 80% market share. And the connected car market is still in the very early innings, and it's growing by well over 20% per year. So Qualcomm's 80% share in this market will become more and more valuable over time. Qualcomm also develops chips for augmented, virtual, and mixed reality headsets. In fact, the MetaQuest 2 and the upcoming MetaQuest 3 are both powered by Qualcomm's 8th generation Snapdragon XR chips. Qualcomm's chipsets in this area focus on enhancing graphics, reducing latency, and advanced eye tracking and gesture recognition, all of which help enable more immersive and realistic mixed reality experiences. According to Grandview Research, the virtual reality market is expected to grow by 27% per year through 2030, with most of that growth coming from head-mounted displays and gesture tracking devices, the exact areas that Qualcomm is involved in. And that was before Apple announced their Vision Pro headset, which I expect to be a real catalyst for the augmented and virtual reality markets over the next few years. So whether we're talking about smartphones, cars, or mixed reality headsets, Qualcomm will be a big beneficiary of AI moving to the edge as well. Importantly, you should know that Qualcomm has seen declines in revenues and profit margins, largely driven by the supply chain shortages and then the lack of consumer demand for new, more expensive electronics like smartphones and laptops since the pandemic. We'll see if that trend continues when they report their earnings in early August as well. The third company on our list makes the chips that Qualcomm designs, and Apple's, and Nvidia's. Weighing in at a cool $450 billion market cap, the Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, or TSMC, is up about 30% year-to-date and is trading at a price-to-earnings ratio of about 16. 
TSMC has well over a 50% market share when it comes to manufacturing the world's chip supply. And even crazier, around 90% of all advanced chips in the world are made by TSMC, like the ones inside Apple's iPhones, Nvidia's GPUs, and even future versions of Tesla's full self-driving chips. TSMC manufactures Apple's A-series chips for the iPhones and the M-series chips that go into Apple's desktops, MacBooks, and iPads. In fact, Apple accounted for about 23% of TSMC's overall revenues last year. They even worked with Nvidia to create a custom 4 nanometer process just for Nvidia's chips. The process is called 4N and is being used to build Nvidia's latest H100 server GPUs. But even though they make all of these advanced chips, estimates show that only about 5% of TSMC's revenue comes from AI. For example, Nvidia charges much more for their GPUs than they pay TSMC to make them. And on top of that, Nvidia generates more revenue by offering a comprehensive suite of software tools and the CUDA programming ecosystem, which are all AI efforts that TSMC doesn't get a part of. Even worse, I just told you that Qualcomm's earnings were down because of key markets like smartphones and laptops seeing lower demand, the exact markets that TSMC makes a lot of chips for. So why the heck is TSMC on this list then? Well, for the exact same reason as Quantum SI and Qualcomm. Mobile chips will need more support for AI applications as inference moves from the cloud to the edge. When that happens, companies like Qualcomm, AMD, and Apple are going to follow Nvidia's lead and make custom processes for different kinds of embedded chips and AI applications, smartphones versus self-driving cars versus VR headsets, and so on. As TSMC optimizes processes for these kinds of applications and sets itself further apart from other foundries like Intel, it can demand a higher premium to build these kinds of custom chips. After all, custom processes take dedicated resources and come with their own requirements to make them worth keeping around. Not only that, but it's kind of crazy for us to assume that the computing devices we have today will be the same exact ones we have five years from now. Devices like the Apple Vision Pro and the Meta Quest make it clear that computers won't just be in our pockets forever. Self-driving cars are another new class of edge device as well. Overall, we should be expecting even more from our devices in the future as inference moves from the cloud to the edge. Better real-time translation between any two languages. Better virtual assistants that can do more tasks for us and do them even better. Cars that drive us instead of us driving them. And we haven't even scratched the surface of things like delivery drones, smart home devices, and the Internet of Things as a whole. All of which should make different aspects of our lives better, faster, easier, and even cheaper. And to me, that's a future worth investing in. And if you want to get even more updates about artificial intelligence, what I'm investing in, and my thoughts on the future in general, consider signing up for my upcoming newsletter. Just head to tickersymbolu.com slash AI if you're interested. Don't worry, I won't ever spam you. I'm way too lazy for that. But there's one more massive AI breakthrough that you need to know about, so make sure to check out this episode next. And if you feel I've earned it, consider hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel. That lets me know to put out more research like this. Either way, thanks for watching, and until next time, this is Ticker Symbol U. My name is Alex, reminding you that the best investment you can make is in you.